Hello, my name is Katja and you are welcome to my channel. During the summer I taught myself a new skill that has been in my family but was in danger of being forgotten. Uh, and it's knoll binding or needle binding or as we call it in Finland, neulakinnas technique. Knoll binding is a very old technique. It's thousands of years old, it's older than knitting or crochet and it makes really sturdy fabric that doesn't unravel. It can be used to make socks or mittens or basically anything. The surface looks like this. When I was a child, I remember my grandmother showing me how it's done. I remember her crocheting a big chain of yarn and doing something mysterious with her hands. But I wasn't able to learn the skill from her because we didn't have time and patience and we were just visiting for a short time. And learning this skill takes time. My grandmother passed away decades ago, so I cannot go to her and learn this skill anymore. But fortunately, there is the internet and books. And during the summer, I went through several tutorials and finally figured out how this technique works. And since then, I've made a pair of mittens, socks, and I'm in the process of making another pair of mittens. These ones are for my father, who says that the non-bound mittens his mother used to make were the best mittens that one can wish for. They are warm, they are durable, and man, just perfect mittens. As I said, the non-binding as a technique is thousands of years old. You can find non-bound socks or mittens in the Iron Age burials in Finland, and you can find several examples from Middle Ages and earlier age and it's been used all around Europe. There are hundreds of different stitches, so there is no one single way of doing this. Basically, if you have a needle and a thread and you're using the needle to sew and make a fabric, it's needle binding or null binding. I've learned two stitches right now. I can make the finish 2 plus 1 and finish 2 plus 2 stitches. The first one is the simplest one and that's the first thing I'm going to show you. But right now I prefer finish 2 plus 2 because it makes a little bit denser fabric. You only need one big needle. Um, there are several kinds of needles, uh, wooden ones, metal ones, bone ones and it's a personal preference what kind of needle you want to use. I started with a wooden needle but right now I prefer to use this big metal needle. For the yarn, you can use basically any yarn, but the wool yarn is the best. And if you can find yarn that felts a bit, it's useful because you have to be able to join the pieces of yarn together as you go along. Since in here we have to work with separate pieces of yarn, we cannot just work from the ball of yarn like we do when we knit or crochet. This yarn that I'm using is Finnish sheep wool and it's something that needs perhaps like 18 stitches per 10 centimeter if that helps. Usually non-bounding is not done to a specific gauge. You just start doing your mitten and you go on trying it on and seeing whether it works. You can increase and decrease as you go and since the increases and decreases are almost invisible it works pretty well like this. You can also use a drawn template of a person's hand, for example, to see whether your mitten will work. That's something that I'm using right now because I'm making a mitten for my father who has huge hands. But I was able to visit my dad and try this on so that I know that it fits. When you are just starting, I recommend just practicing one simple stitch. Forget everything about um, working with longer pieces of yarn. Just take a piece of yarn that feels comfortable. If you need more yarn, just tie a knot so that you can just concentrate on getting the basic stitch right. Make a chain. If it doesn't work, just start over again and at some point it starts making sense. I am still a beginner, so it might be a bit pretentious to make a tutorial, but then I believe that um, first teaching this skill to somebody else helps me to learn and also that the beginner perhaps knows a lot about the difficulties that a beginner might face. So, 
if you don't understand what I'm doing, I'm linking down some really good tutorials that I used to learn this skill and also some books that I have and, and you can use them as a reference. But just bear in mind that there are several different ways to do this. There are several different ways to begin your stitching. There are several different ways to make the stitch. So if you are jumping from one tutorial to another, you may get confused because things are done differently. The first garment that I made were these mittens and I'm going to show some footage from the summer when I was making these. These have been done with finished 2 plus 1 stitch. Weave that is uh, not particularly dense. So I don't think this is perfect for a pair of mittens that are supposed to be warm. So I don't think this stitch is really good for mittens, but it's really good practice stitch. You can make like arm um, or like warmers with this and it would be just fine. These are full of mistakes, but it's just a sign of me learning something new. Even when I was watching my tutorial, I saw me making mistakes. So I tried to skip those parts, but anyway, at least these look like mittens and they might be really practical to use underneath another pair of mittens when it's really cold outside. Let's go back in time and I will show the basic stitch, how it's made. You have to probably make several beginnings before you can get the hang of it, but it's perhaps easiest if you start with a slip knot. this, put it around your thumb. The other end of the yarn, the needle, like this. I start by holding both the knot and the loose yarn between the thumb and my forefinger. It looks like I have two loops on my thumb, but in reality I still have just a starting loop and the yarn that goes over the thumb. I hold them like this in the beginning to prevent knots from forming. To make the second loop on the thumb, I push the needle under the starting loop and the yarn and pull through. Then I repeat the same thing and make a third loop. Now I have three loops on my thumb and the yarn still goes over the thumb. This is the beginning of a chain. So I'll put my needle underneath the oldest stitch. Actually it's the loop we made at the beginning. Then you'll twist and then thread your needle underneath the two stitches and the working yarn. And you pull. And this is how you create the new stitch. New stitch is formed underneath the previous stitches. So the oldest stitch is always here, the newest is here. Now we'll repeat it. Like this. Underneath. Keep your yarn underneath the thumb so that you can make stitches like so. Again. have a mess behind the thumb and you are thinking that this is not going to work. Let's just pull it a little bit and leave it. It will start making sense once we repeat it a few more times. So let's take this.
can see. Here is the chain we have been making. So after you've made this about like 10 times, you start seeing that there is this nice chain being formed. Then you can just keep on repeating this. If you want to interrupt, it is possible. Just take the stitches out, but then you remember that you have to be able to put them back. And how do you do it? And what if your loops get mixed up? So the yarn goes always first. And then when your loops go on your thumb, they go so that the oldest one is at the top and the youngest one is here. And here, if you look at them, they crisscross here. So this is the oldest one. It goes over here. Then there is the second oldest. It goes over here. And the youngest one, which is which comes right behind the thumb, it's here. So you can actually look at the starting point of these loops. And here you can see in which order these, these should be in here. Okay, well, now I have only this much yarn left. So this means that I have to add new yarn. How do you work with long amounts of yarn? This is the only thing I remember from my grandmother's teaching. Null binding is done with long strands of yarn, but you cannot just take yarn from the ball like you do while you're knitting. You have to cut the yarn. So it's annoying to continue your yarn all the time, so it makes sense to use a really long stretch of yarn to do your null binding. So what you do to make it easier is that you're looping the yarn into really big crochet stitches and then you are unraveling your chain when you are stitching. So I'll take my needle and I thread my yarn through so that it's doubled. So now I start crocheting, make one loop, another loop, another loop, and I continue like this. I'll make a big, bit over a meter of this loop, just a little bit more yarn. So, here is my chain. Now I can break the yarn, like, like so. And, and I can pull the yarn through the last stitch. And this will create a small knot. There is no need to tighten it because we are going to keep unraveling this knot. But now we can pull this yarn without the chain unraveling while we are stitching. Then you can either make a knot. There are different kinds of knot, like a Russian join is quite good if you want to hide your yarn ends. Or if you have yarn that falls easily, you can just open this up a bit and open up the other end that comes from your work. And then you can moisten it a bit if needed. And then you'll just add some friction and felt these yarn ends with each other. This yarn felts really easily. And you can create a really seamless join. It just has to be strong enough for you to be able to pull it through your stitches. But this way you don't have like hundreds of yarns to finish when your work is done. 
you cannot even see the joint when it's done. And now you can just continue stitching. The loops are here in order. So this is the oldest and it's at the top. The newest stitch is at the bottom and the yarn goes from underneath these three stitches and over the thumb. I will use two stitches to bind my null binding into the previous row. So I'll take one new stitch from the top and then one used stitch. Here you can see that it's a used stitch because the previous stitch goes through it. So I'll take these two and then I continue just like I did previously. Just take this, turn around and then go through. The new stitch is formed. Again, one new, one old. Pick the stitch, turn around and put the needle through. running out of yarn. So what I do now is that I find the place where the yarn in the knot goes perpendicular to the thread that I'm sewing with and I just loosen it just a little bit like so and then I poke my needle through from the direction of the needle like so. Sometimes there is some felting, like here, I just snap the felted bits off. Because this yarn is felting really fast. And then I can just pull and the new knot is formed here, as you can see. I can repeat this to get a little bit more yarn, so I'll just poke my needle through and I'll release the one more loop like so you don't have to tighten this knot so let's pick up the work again needle goes over the thumb and then in order so that the oldest stitch is at the top again one new one old Pick up a stitch, then the needle round, walk through. What does the surface look like? It looks like this. It's a good idea to if it looks a bit uneven, just stretch it a bit. It settles like this. So it's depending on yarn it is and your stitch size it is denser or, or looser. This is such a simple stitch so it's a little bit looser. But when you're using a thick yarn like this, it's, it still works. Here you can see all the stitches that I will pick when I go forward. You could also bind to these horizontal stitches here. That would make it a little bit denser. Or I think people sometimes, people can also pick it from the back. 
you create an extra twist, then it will look different. I haven't tried it yet. Here is my first mitten, which I have almost finished. I still lack the thumb. Now I'm making the second one, but now I should start making a thumb and I do it by increasing here. So a bit like anything, I'll add more stitches. I didn't really calculate the number of stitches I added. I added first one and I think then two and then perhaps three here and here. But I kept trying it on and because the increases are pretty invisible it doesn't really matter how many I made. I'll, well you can sort of see where they are if you are really trying to look for them. Here there are two stitches in the same loop so here I've started I've made one increase here but normally when you're doing needle binding you do things by feel you don't count the stitches really. Now when I want to increase I just simply take the same stitches again that I did the previous time and do another stitch and that's all. Now I have one more stitch here and then in the next round I make more increases and on my first mitten I increased on four rows. If I want to decrease I just take two stitches here and the one all stitch and now I'm basically no, for a normal stitch I do this and for the decrease I do this and for increase I'll take these two again. The second project I made were these wool socks and for these I used finish 2 plus 2 stitch. This, this stitch is pretty dense as you can see and I also learned how to make a heel. With this I'm going to show you how to make the circular start which is really useful. When you start from the toe you can keep on trying the sock on and you can be sure that it fits. The finish 2 plus 2 stitch. It's similar to the finish 2 plus 1 stitch except that now we are picking one extra loop from behind the thumb. So here are the binding stitches, the thumb loop and then the previous loop from behind the thumb then twist and push through all the thumb loops like so so the binding loops the one from the thumb the previous loop from behind the thumb twist and through the loops on the thumb and under the working yarn and that's all to make the circle a beginning, we start with a simple loop that now can be a bit bigger than when we started with the chain. Hold the loop from the knot between your thumb and forefinger. Next we start stitching through the starting loop and form the thumb loops on the thumb. Put a needle through the starting loop and the working yarn. There are no thumb loops yet to go under. The first thumb loop is made this way. Now continue by pushing the needle first through the starting loop and then under the thumb loop and the working yarn. Continue until you have three thumb loops.
then stick the needle through the starting loop, then pick up the oldest thumb loop, dropping it from the thumb. Twist and push the needle under the rest of the thumb loops and the working yarn. Now finally we can continue by making 2 plus 2 stitches and binding them to the starting loop. So stick the needle through the starting loop, pick up the oldest thumb loop, pick the previous loop from behind the thumb and then push the needle under the thumb loops and the working yarn. Continue until you have enough stitches to make a circle. For my socks I made about 15 stitches. When you have enough stitches, you can close the circle by pulling the yarn end. Then you can continue stitching and binding your stitches to the first row you just completed. On this second round you need to increase at every stitch, on the third round increase at every other stitch and, and then continue increasing so that you end up with a mitten shape or a sock toe shape or whatever you are making. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support this channel, share the video with your friends or buy me a coffee. See you later. Bye.